Hello there, I'm Eric, and I'd like to ask you the question, how can understanding various leadership theories help the effectiveness of team teachers working together to teach English in Japanese K-12 English classrooms? So if that question interests you at all, I'd like to invite you to join me as I explain a paper I've written in this presentation entitled Team Teaching and Situational Leadership Theory, Adapting and Combining Frameworks for Japanese English Education. And just a short overview of what I'll be talking about, I'm going to be looking at various leadership theories using the lens of various leadership theories to look at relationships and behaviors in team teaching environments. And we're looking at the context of a specific rural Japanese school district called the Miyazu City School District and how they employ uh, team teaching there in their K-12 schools. So I'm going to be looking at the team teaching environments and analyzing it from a perspective of leadership and leadership theory. And hopefully from that, will start to gain and create a new framework, a new model from which to better understand and improve on working relationships of team teachers. All right, so let's get started. So in this presentation, uh, we're going to be talking about team teachers and co-teaching. But they, I'd like to make a distinction between the two. In the context here in Japan, they refer to it as team teaching, but that's quite different from co-teaching. Uh, team teaching, like any other team, for example, a basketball team, you have your star point guard and you also have someone riding the bench. They're on the same team, but they don't really have the same status. In co-teaching, um, it's just like how it sounds, uh, just like co-owners of a business, they co-own that classroom. They might not be equal as far as their subject matter expertise, but uh, they're equal in rank and they're equal in the eyes of their students and perhaps administrators looking inside the classroom. The, it's a little bit ambiguous as to who's actually managing or planning the lessons too in the co-teaching environment. And that distinction is going to become a little bit more pronounced as we start to apply some leadership theory to team teaching. So to talk a little bit about the context of which we're drawing out some uh, team teaching uh, environment ideas, uh, this is the Miyazu City School District in the northern part of Kyoto Prefecture in Japan. This is where actually I worked for five years from 2005 to 2010 as a teacher working at various schools as in team teaching classroom environments, mostly at the junior high level. Um, they have 12 elementary schools, four junior high schools, and two high schools, and they all employ team teaching at various levels and different ways. So we're going to be drawing on some of this context, uh, my own personal observations, but also from interviews and surveys that I've taken during my tenure there, and afterwards going back to uh, do some uh, projects with them as well. So what is team teaching? Team teaching is two teachers working together in the classroom. One is a JTE, a, usually a not native speaker of English, but they're trained in education and English, specifically English education. And they're paired up with an ALT, sometimes called an AET, assistant language teacher, assistant English teacher. They are a native English speaker, but they usually don't have any formal training in English education. They're usually a fresh college graduate with some interest in Japan or a, uh, looking for a working holiday that come uh, through the Ministry of Education to work in Japan. So these two teachers, the JTE and the AET, ALT, are supposed to work together as a team in the classroom for the benefit of Japanese K-12 English students. So as we start to pull upon and try to build a framework for better understanding the relationships between these two teachers, we'll be looking at uh, a couple of different ideas from the team teaching world. And this first one here doesn't necessarily talk about leadership directly, 
but it has a lot of leadership ideas in it. And to explain this first uh, figure here, it's actually from the Teen Teaching Handbook uh, that's provided by Claire, which is a subgroup of the Ministry of Education here in Japan, and it's given to all team teachers entering through the Ministry of Education in team teaching environments in Japan. And this figure has an x-axis, which is the level of dominance and initiative on the part of the JTE. And the horizontal axis here is the level of dominance and initiative on the part of the ALT. It's interesting to put that the dominance and initiative are actually some of the well-pronounced leadership traits from uh, leadership theory uh, literature going as back as 1986 and even before that. Uh, Lord et al. 1986 found a meta, uh, wrote a meta-analysis on leadership and found that intelligence, masculinity, and dominance were important traits on how we perceive leaders. So this is not necessarily about uh, having initiative, but the dominance here is how uh, the leaders are perceived by the students and by each other working together in the classroom. So we can start to infer what kind of classroom, what kind of uh, approach to English education the classroom might take by how dominant one team member is, or if they both are dominant, or both would both have initiative. So if both ALT and JTE have an initiative, it's considered one of the best environments where they have synergy, they're putting together their talents, they both have initiative, they both have uh, flipped back and forth on their dominance, and uh, they develop lessons together. When they neither, the AAT or JTE, have initiative or dominance, you have sort of a stalling in the progress of creating lessons and the uh, team teaching environment. But interestingly, when one member of the group is dominant and the other becomes sort of a supporter, we have usually come out with different ways that uh, English education is taken. For example, if the JTE is dominant and the ALT is a minor player, a lot of people like to refer this to as the human tape recorder. I call it chalk and talk. It's mainly a, um, a grammar approach where Japanese is used to explain English uh, substance, English grammar in the classroom, and the ALT is there as a supporter and many times often used and ask just to read dialogue or be a sounding board to get correct pronunciation or to have the students um, practice dialogues or uh, hear correct pronunciations. But on the other side of that, when the ALT is the dominant figure and takes initiative, we have, and many times, the, and this calls, calls it a culture clash, but I like to think of it more as a communicative approach. Um, the ALT is less concerned with uh, perhaps a standardized test, which is in the back of almost every JTE's mind. So they're going to try, they're going to have the goal of creating great communicators and less at, uh, to, with the goal of scoring well on a standardized test. So you can actually see uh, another leadership theory in here, which is uh, leader member exchange theory, LMX, because you can see that we start to form in-out groups between these two uh, members, team members in this, in this uh, dynamic, because the JTE is concerned with their administrative uh, responsibilities and the ALT is bringing their own cultural and uh, in-group ideas as well. I'm gonna start building on that. I'd like to also introduce a framework or a matrix that uh, I made back in 2008 with a JTE partner of mine, uh, Satomi Ogasawara. And we started to look at team teaching and co-teaching and the passage of time and how that evolves. So we have our what's talked about before, the JTE directed and the AET directive 
approaches where one is becomes dominant and takes initiative and that kind of makes a different style and different approach to the classroom and they have their advantages and different disadvantages to each which I kind of touched on earlier but as the passage of time moves along we start to get a more evolved form of team teaching which is more closer to the co-teaching which I mentioned earlier and an interim of that is what I like to call tag team teaching where the time in the classroom is actually shared. So the JT will direct maybe the first or second half of the class and the other half of the class is directed by the AET. And they have to combine uh, what grammar, what topic, what theme they're working on in that classroom and they just share the time. Where one is supporting the other in one part of the time and then they switch roles for the second part of the time. And then even more time passes and they start to not just share time or divide time between them, but they actually share the time together. So then it becomes more of a co-teaching environment and it becomes really ambiguous as to who is planning these lessons, who is managing these lessons. And the student becomes almost unaware of uh, which teacher is uh, actually running the class. And this is very interesting because this also goes along with some of the leader member theories that we've seen in uh, past leadership theories. Uh, this divides team teaching and co-teaching and the teacher here is represented in phases of leadership. So they go from roles of scripted team teaching to negotiated team teaching. The influences move from one way in team teaching towards a reciprocal uh, approach in co-teaching and uh, also moves from uh, exchanges between the two move from low quality to high quality and the interests of the both the JTE and the AET move from uh, self-interest to group interest and these are all ideas that were taken from uh, LMX leader member theory. Some other theories that can go along with this whole te team teaching environment, uh, one is a contingency theory. Team teachers will work better together when their LPCs or their least preferred co-worker uh, is aligned. So this, this, might, this means in team teaching that it might be beneficial for teachers to try to pair together perhaps one task motivated teacher with one relationship motivated teacher. And uh, also, we can think about team leadership in this example, too. Of, of course, they're team teachers. There's this, uh, the same word popping up there. But team leadership theory thinks about these issues of self and external group issues. And uh, there's a lot of that involved in team teaching because uh, we have different cultural backgrounds and preferred pedagogical approaches. So they have different interests when it comes to their uh, self-interest and the issue, the interest that they place on their students. So team, uh, team leadership is also quite applicable in team teaching as well. But the main thing I'd like to talk today about is uh, situational leadership and how that applies to some of the models that I were talking about before. And we're going to start to create a new framework based on some of that. So situational approach or leadership uses levels of supportive and directive behavior. And notice here they're on the y and x axis of this matrix. Uh, you, if you're more supportive and less directive, you're up in this quadrant. If you're more uh, directive and less supportive, you're down here. If you're neither supportive or directive and if you're more uh, supportive directive you're up here so that's usually uh, considered coaching delegating directing and supporting so those are traditional ways to look at uh, situational leadership supporting coaching delegating directing but as we start to think about uh, the four styles of leadership here in team teaching we can start to see how this is very beneficial and we can start to pull out some of the pedagogical approaches that we might see 
from this type of uh, behaviors in both teams of teachers, both team members of teachers. So the less supportive and less directive starts to pull away from the co-teaching idea and starts to come towards the team teaching aspect and more coaching and more delegating on both part of the AET and JTE um, start moved, moving toward a co-teaching environment. And depending on who's supporting and who's directing, you can have that uh, dynamic to where one person, this more of a team teaching role itself too. So when one person is um, the dominant and the other person takes initiative and so forth. And as we move towards both on the directive behavior, it depends on who's directing and who's coaching. But when it becomes um, sort of both members doing both, we start to move towards a co-teaching environment. And what I'd like to propose and how we use this in uh, team teaching is that teachers can... Uh, use this to kind of plot their own behaviors. So team teaching environments are best when uh, each member builds on each other's experiences and strengths, allowing students to benefit from the knowledge and experiments of each team member. So when members trying to should be, should be trying to exchange positions on this matrix as much as possible, so team teachers can use this matrix to plot their own behaviors and then attempt to take a different approach uh, for the benefit of their students. To take an example of that, um, I took a survey of all ALTs in Kyoto Prefecture in 2008, and I asked ALTs if they waited for the J L JTE to ask them to do something before they did it. Did they take initiative, basically? And 53, only 53% 53 of them said they waited to be asked, and 47% no. But if you asked on the opposite side of that, you asked the JTE, uh, does the ALT speak out without being asked? And a lot of them said no. So this is there's a um, discrepancy here. Uh, ALTs think they're taking more initiative, JTEs think they're not taking any initiative. So there's, why are we seeing this gap and how can this matrix help us determine what is happening here? So this is just one idea of taking initiative. Uh, are you speaking out in class? Are you chiming in in class? So I propose that we use this to kind of plot your own behaviors because sometimes the simple idea of speaking out is not necessarily in the front of our minds. So this, this helps us get an idea of what kind of behaviors we're exhuming in the classroom. So now we can plot not only our own behaviors of what we, what we see in the class, but we can try to plot what our partners are doing. And therefore, we can take a stance to either support them or delegate them to uh, synergize in the classroom. To build on this in the future, the framework probably needs some more refinement. Um, I'd like it to be used as a feedback tool. So one of the big things about team teaching and trying to move towards uh, using LMX theory to move towards that co-teaching environment is that teachers need to be giving feedback to each other constantly. And this can be used as a feedback tool. For example, uh, you were a little bit more supportive today, a little bit more directive today. Um, and we had this type of environment. We had a co-teaching type environment. We had a team teaching type environment, and help use that as a feedback tool, not only for yourself but as your part, but for your partner. And then overall, we can start to use this as a measurement to see how effective different team teaching environments are to actual English education. We can also use some technology to help give some interventions into using this type of idea uh, to move towards a more team, from team teaching to a co-teaching type of environment. We can use some uh, collaboration tools, some web-based collaboration tools for communication. Uh, a lot of teachers right now 
in the Miyazo City School District are using an online chat application called Line to help them uh, plan lessons. Uh, perhaps some web-based teacher training to help get this idea out of uh, what type the different types of team teaching environments. This is still uh, because there is no orientation specific to uh, the Miyazo City School District or most of the school districts in rural Japan. Uh, if these ideas were introduced in some web-based training, it would be beneficial to them to know. And some fear, peer feedback mobile applications would be interesting. Um, something that teachers can use on the go, just give some quick feedback when they're not in the same location uh, to give some feedback, to share schedules, uh, to look forward to into the future and uh, get some sort of move towards that co-teaching aspect for the benefit of students. So I thank you for listening to my ideas of situational leadership theory as applied to team teaching. If you have any other questions, you can contact me at erichhawkinson.com or search the, uh, or write some comments in the comment section. And I thank you again.